sex, although I suppose we've said it's not always private, but, but it tends by its nature to be private, happen behind closed yeah. doors, not to, to leave many records of itself behind. Mm. But it seemed to me that you had benefited from certain men who had written quite graphically about their sex mm. lives, like Peeps and yes. Boswell and, and the anonymous Walter. Tell, oh, me, yeah. tell me about some of them. What, 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 what were they doing and what, what did you gain from their Peeps, accounts? Peeps, of course, kept a coded diary and related his um, sexual escapades. And he comes out of it in strange ways, rather lovable, rather rather sad. There's one account of um, he was trying to feel up a girl in church, basically, and he's getting closer and closer. And it all sounds a bit like um, Benny Hill, almost, because he was sort of move, putting the moves on her, and she was moving away, and he was moving after her, and he kept trying to touch her up. And then she reached into her hat and bought out a hat pin and stuck it in his arm. And I think it's quite funny that somebody should have sort of, should actually record that about himself. You know, most men would try and forget about it, not write it down in a diary, even if the diary was only for his own own use and as a record of his accounts. Boswell, again, great user of prostitutes, and he's got accounts of, an account of being on a bridge, having sex with a prostitute as the river rolled away beneath them, which he thought was, uh, it rather turned him on. And, and you've then, got that. You've got that yeah. same kind of yeah. compulsion and revulsion, revulsion. kind of yes. attitude, haven't you? He, yes. he, he vows to give it up, and then mm. very quickly he forgets his vow. Yes, in 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 his case, in Boswell's case, he he'll sort of explain how he um, picked up a girl in Downing Street and went and had sex with her in a park, and uh, and then he says in this sort of Scottish way, "Well, it was a sorry business. I won't do it again." And then three days later, he's down there again. <laughs> Um, of course, Walter, the 19th century anonymous writer, was a um, different sort. He was um, what some people would have called a rum cove a few generations ago because he wrote about his sexual odyssey at great length. We never really know who he was, but he was obviously a sexual compulsive who had to have sex with as many women as possible and write about it in detail so that he could probably read it back later. But what's interesting about Walter's accounts of things is that the nastier side of, of masculinity is, is laid bare. He doesn't spare you from seeing what a nasty piece of work he is. I mean, not, not cruel or vicious, not sadistic or murderous, but just he predates people like um, Mailer or Roth or Martin Amis in his really disgusting, self-flagellating accounts of his sexual exploits. And you just think, oh, oh how could you? But it's refreshingly honest as well. You know, it's it's not all hearts and flowers. It's not all romantic. It's it's really grim, and reading too much of it at one time, you, you just sort of lose patience with him. But it's it's a fascinating account. So much for the men's voices, mm. but what about capturing women's voices? That must be all the harder because mm. they weren't. They probably tended not to be educated, not to be in positions of power, not you know, not to have the same access as men. Very, very few of them were. I mean, um, I do write at some length about it. A class of girls I call the Grand Horizontales, who were the top courtesans. You know, there'd be a few of them in every generation who would be actresses or um, kept women who were a bit dodgy, you know, slightly saucy, but who managed to live very well, retire and die rich and happy. But these were the exceptions. The majority of them were victims and had very tough lives and very short lives. Um, Henry Mayhew interviewed a number of prostitutes in his research into the life of the London poor. The majority of his prostitutes are women who've seen better days or women who've been tricked into it or alcoholics who can't see any way out of it because there's a really strong tie between prostitution and alcoholism as there is today between other sorts of substance abuse. But his um, accounts of the girls' lives um, are taken down verbatim, and these provided a fascinating source for me. And then there are one or two, such as a girl called Sarah Tanner. She was interviewed by a diarist called Munby, who knew her, not in that sense, but who befriended her. And she'd started out as a servant, and then he'd met her in the street, and she told him she decided to become a prostitute, just as if she'd made a career decision. And he bumped into her subsequently a few times, and she was living very nicely, had some lovely clothes. And then a few years later, he encountered her again. And she, look, she looked much more respectable and businesslike. And so he asked Sarah what she was doing. And she said, oh, 
She'd had quite a successful career as a prostitute for about four or five years. She'd educated herself so that she could be good company for the men. She sought out you know, educated, cultivated, professional men who would appreciate her. She'd saved enough money to open a coffee shop. And the coffee shop was uh, run by her as a legal business, not a front for anything. And she'd more or less gone back into the ranks of respectability. So the idea that once a whore, always a whore, it's, it's not always the case. You know, some t in some cases, it was something these women did for a while, and then they found a better life or they married. Catherine Arnold. City of Sin has just appeared in hardback, and Catherine's previous two books in this trilogy, Necropolis and Bedlam, are available in paperback. You can find out more details on the website at blackwell.co.uk. You'll also find an archive of over 100 author interviews there. I'll be back soon with another podcast, and until then, thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.